This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. But I have done my best for this town. I am a Spacer's choice man. My father was a Spacer's choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned up freelancer. But it is my home. Thompson, you know, my boss? I can't. I need to leave. I need to get away from here. I need to get away from you. You killed Mr. Thompson for talking down his nose at me? You got a real twisted sense of chivalry, you know that? Let's just... Let's just move on. I couldn't forgive myself if I let you loose upon the veil unsupervised. got themselves a mama wrapped in You want to run? You got it, Captain!
Hey, outlaw. You know, you didn't have to shoot me down if you wanted an autograph. What was that? There you are. We're all ready. Just waiting on you. Martha has the sauce ready, and the children have set the table. All it needs is a main course. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
this means they'll start rebuilding this place proper, I'm for it. What's the word? So it is. Thus ends Rufus Trask. Once a sensible man, by and by a fool, presently a corpse. I hope you never have to discover what it is like, Captain. The relief one feels when a mutiny comes to an end. The Trask had some things to say about you. And I've got my own misgivings. That's a damning accusation. Am I right to presume you have some evidence on hand? You're inclined to believe the word of a traitor. You realize he would have said anything to shake you from his trail. Clyde, look me in the eye and tell me it's not true. Tell me, and I'll believe you. Don't talk to me like I'm some common criminal, Felix. You're the one on trial, not me. I don't know what kind of poison that snake dripped in your ear, but as far as I'm concerned, you've been compromised. It's a fire! This is... The void's black, water's wet, and Clyde hated the board. That's something I just knew. Now? I don't know. I don't know what to think. Yeah, no kidding, boss. You made that clear as day. I've just got a lot on my mind right now. This is, uh... This is a lot to take in. I always looked up to Clyde. The thought that he could be an agent of the board is just abhorrent to me. I just hope I never turn out like that. Selling my soul for a fistful of bits. I ought to thank you for that. Keeping me on the straight and narrow. You've given me a lot to think about. I'm going to be mulling over this whole mess for a couple of days. I don't know what I believe anymore. Maybe it's better that way. Thanks for your time, boss. Well, this is the spot. You know, I thought I'd be angry. I thought I'd storm in here in a rage and exterminate all these bugs and everything would be all right in the end. But I ain't. I'm mostly just empty. A little sad, maybe. The first night Hayes and I spent in here, we knew it was home. It's safe. It's got a nice chill to it. But mostly, it doesn't stink of sulfur. Monarch folks often joke about it. Not because of the smell or the grittiness it leaves in your throat. Not because of the headaches or the coughing. It's because there's no escaping it. It's life here, and there ain't anything you can do about it. 
but here, somehow the sulfur never made it. The nights we spent in here felt like vacations. So we started building. We hauled in steel, hired sublight folk to help. That's how we met Anders and Opal. They stuck around after our contract was up. Opal liked camping. Anders liked chasing her tail. Four of us for a while, scraping together what bits we could to build our home. Then came Rebecca, a sawbones out of the Cascadia survivors, who took a kindness to Hayes. And Clara, her little sister. I'll admit I wasn't keen on taking her on at first. But for a teenager, she was surprisingly capable. Believe me, I had my complaints. She had a head for numbers, helped us trade hides for food and materials, negotiated contracts, turned out to be mighty useful. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, and me. Six folks, one name, one family, Charon. Despite Monarch trying to kill us day in and day out, we managed to belong. Me too, Captain. But I'm starting to think that maybe I've found another. Now let's get to shooting before I get all sentimental. Incoming! these were more auspicious circumstances, but at least we're all here. This bringing them together, burying them. This is the kind of thing Hayes would have done. That makes it stupid. By all accounts, we should have left well enough alone, but that also makes it right. Captain, thank you. You mind if we rest a spell before we head out? I'd I'd like to bury Opal and Clara proper before I lay everyone's medallions to rest. What? Why? Them's painful memories, Captain. Huh. 
Huh. That's... That ain't a bad point. All right, Captain. Thanks. I admit, part of me expected you to stand by your old friend. For better or worse, Wells was responsible for putting you back on your feet. That said, he's also a wanted criminal. For information regarding his whereabouts, you are entitled to collect a reward from Percival. The signal you sent us is experiencing some interference. My agents will need time to isolate the problem. We're going to monitor Wells until we're ready to make a move. I asked you here to discuss something far more important. I understand you've infiltrated the Ministry. The things you discovered there must have been shocking, even disturbing. Halcyon is on the verge of a total systems collapse. The truth is ugly and difficult to accept, but we must accept the truth before we can move forward. Malnutrition is already a problem. Disease will come next, followed by starvation, followed by a breakdown of society, followed by extinction. I know this must come as a surprise to you. I imagine you have questions. Guess monarch folk ain't the only ones fucked around here. That ain't exactly an uplifting thought. I know your face. Stellar Bay's most infamous hunter. How curious that you've thrown your lot in with the captain. Monarch may harbor delusions of independence, but make no mistake. You are a part of our colony. If we fall, Monarch falls with us. Is that why we were suffering plague in Edgewater? Malnutrition? All those folks sick and dying, and you knew why the whole time? Yes, Miss Holcomb, we knew why. We've known for some time that Edgewater was dying. The colony itself is dying. The suffering you experienced in Edgewater, the disease, the starvation, will soon spread across Halcyon unless we act. I won't pretend the truth isn't damning. Yes, the colony is on the verge of collapse, but there is a way to save it. We need to talk about Emerald Vale. You handed Edgewater over to a band of dissidents. I can't have this. Adelaide McDevitt and her people have no place in the Halcyon that is to come. Edgewater needs to go. I want you to wipe the town out. No survivors. I will hunt beasts until I'm out of ammunition, and then I'll fight a good long while after. But I am not about to mow down a crowd of innocent people. Then I suggest you find your courage, or pretend you're hunting beasts. You're a monster. Someone has to be. Now is not the time for half measures, Captain. I need a decision from you. No, allowing thousands of colonists to starve to death because we couldn't make one cold-blooded decision is insane. What I'm suggesting is absolutely logical. You talk less like a human than mechanicals I've known. I am responsible for every single human life in this colony. Do you imagine I relish the thought of killing some of them to save the rest? Steal your spine, Captain. Do what needs to be done. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be, Captain. I rather like you, and I'd hate to have you shot for disobeying a direct order. I'm disappointed. I was so sure you had potential. Here they come!
That's the last of them. Halcyon after all. Woo! We all in one piece? 